Today on this old house, this new porch gets decked with recycled material. Our homeowner adds a beautiful touch to the mudroom. And these eight giant tanks will control the rainfall from the storm of the century. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. This one right here is right on. Family that paints together stays together. Nice job. Where will a slab like this be used? The money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here in Newton, Massachusetts where you can see the progress we are making on this house. Check out our new front porch. That has been completely reframed. We've got new decking down, we've got new posts, and we were able to save the original railing which went back in place. Now, much of that work was done by our apprentices and sadly we had to say goodbye to them last week so they're going to be missed. Right here, you may recall, there was a big Norway maple and uh, had a big bruise on the bottom. It was also very close to the house and the power line, so Roger had it taken down. And our homeowner, Joe, well, he's actually splitting it into firewood. So next year, that'll be conditioned and he's gonna be able to burn it in a new wood-burning stove that we're installing for him next week. And over here, check out the side of the house. This is the first time you could really see this side with the tree down. The siding is almost up. We've got clapboards on the first floor. We've got shingles on the second floor. And our homeowners picked a pre-primed, pre-painted look. So those are the final colors. That is gonna look sweet. And out back, well, we got another project going on back there as well. Good morning, Norm. Hey, there hey, it is. Kevin. All right, working hard again, huh? Last week tile, this week a deck, huh? Yeah. And it looks like a composite deck. Right, Kevin, it's a composite material. We've used materials like this before. Um, it's made out of recycled wood products and polyethylene, like water bottles. Cool. And it gets extruded when it's made. And this one has a coating on the top when it's extruded <clears throat> that helps reduce fading and scratching. Nice. And so they also give you the color and the wood tone right here. Right. Although, Liz, I guess you could have gone with natural wood. Um, why the composite? Um, we like the recycled content of the material and the durability. I'd rather be playing out here with my kids than maintaining a deck. Boy, and I it hear looks that. great. <laughs> yeah. So now it gets attached with these clips. It's got a groove already cut in it, and the clip goes in like this, and then a screw goes through this hole to fasten it. And they go in this, it looks like a nail gun, right? Yep. But it's actually driving these screws down through the clip. And the clip also holds it up, giving an airspace between the frame and the decking. Mm -hmm. It also spaces the decking right here. You can see the space. Oh, yeah. So it makes it pretty easy. Nice. All right. Well, you guys have obviously made some progress, uh, so you've got a plan. I promised Charlie some help, so I'll leave you guys to this. Okay. Great. All right. Okay, that plank is secure. Now the next one will fit, but we need a small piece for here. Right. And we'll rip that now. Okay. Okay, Liz, so this is where we'll rip the piece. The manufacturers suggest a carbide blade. If you could just help guide it. Okay, Liz, let's just slide that underneath the skirt board. All right. And the cut side goes towards the house, right? Yep. Okay. All right, now to fill the gap we see now, we're going to put in a full width piece. Just drop it in. Okay. Yep. We can't use the clips here, so we're going to use these screws. They're stainless steel and they match the color of the decking. So, Liz, what I want you to do is take this bar and just Pull, pull on it like that Wedge so it, it, it's yeah. nice and tight okay. and I'll drive the screw. All right. Like that? Yeah, perfect. 
You're gonna drive a screw. Don't wanna drive it in too much, just kind of flush so it looks nice. Good. Great. All right, we do the same thing all the way down the line. All right, Liz, last piece. We use a spacer since we don't have a clip in there. Okay. And we've put some screws in to get them started. But it's also nice just to take this bar and just put a little pressure on it. Okay. Okay. Yep. All set? Yep. Okay, let's do it. All right, Liz, that finishes it. That went pretty well, and it looks great. Wow, I love it. Yeah. Thanks, Norm. Thank you. Now we've got a spot for lunch. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. One of the original features of our house is these ornamental brackets. And when we added a second story to the back of the house for the master suite and the new garage, we needed more. 56 more to be exact. Now we could have replicated them all using a CNC machine, but that's expensive and it's a budget job, Charlie, so you've got a better way. It is a budget job and I figured I'd do it at night, believe it or not. Save the homeowner some money and give me something to do. You got nothing better to do, nothing huh? Nothing better to do. All right, so it's a big beefy piece of material and if we were to make it um, out of solid stock, we need about four inches thick, we need it by 10 or 12 inches wide and you're talking cedar, right? Yeah, it would have been expensive and it still would have given us another process still to mill it down to get our dimension. So it's not like we would have bought it off the shelf like that. Right. So we took two by 12 Western Red Cedar, glued it together. Easy to get our hands on that stock. It is. We cleaned up the edges, squared one of them. We're gonna get two of these brackets every 15 inches. So we're gonna mark it up, cut it on the chop saw, and then we can start templating. All right, now we can uh, put our sample piece on. We're gonna line up the two square edges with the bracket. Make a nice dark line so we can see it. And now this, on the opposite side, do the same thing. All set? That's good there. I'm gonna separate these? Yeah, that'd be great. Right, now that I have these separated, I'm going to square up these two cuts on the chop saw. All right, just uh Follow the line, but leave the pencil line on because yep. we'll hit it with the sander to clean it up. Okay.
check this out, Charlie. Wow, look at that. That looks terrific and a perfect match to the originals. It is a perfect match. And guess what? We only have 50 more to do, and you are more than welcome to get out here and help us. Yeah, uh, I got places to be. I think, I think you got this one. Next time, right? Yeah, next time. Okay. Our Newton homeowners, Joe and Liz, are at the point where they're considering countertops. And one of the things they're thinking about is quartz, which is exactly what we're using here at our Idea House in Rhode Island. And uh, Jeff, you like it because you've used it before and you're using it again. Yep, yep. Uh, one of the things I like about it is that it's a man-made product. Mm -hmm. So that enables us to control the mixture, the content, any of the design elements can be combined with any flares, any designs in the quartz. The other thing I like about it is that it's, uh, it's a very durable surface. It doesn't require sealing. It doesn't require yeah. any maintenance. And the last thing I like about it is that we don't have to go pick the slab. So we can pick off of a sample, and then we can be pretty well assured that it's going to look like that sample. Yeah, I mean, even though quartz itself is natural, that man-made process gives us that uniformity of look. And you know from a sample, you're going to get the exact same thing on a slab. Yep. To connect two sections, we use a special machine that draws the pieces together. All right, we're gonna fish up this last seam. We'll clean that up, drill for our faucet, install a cooktop, mm -hmm. and we got a countertop. All right, and I've got something to report back to Joe and Liz. I know how it looks. Yes, you do. All right, thanks, All Jeff. Right. Now you can watch this old house and ask this old house anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovation, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. When we rebuilt this front porch, we made a big improvement to the front steps, and that gave us an opportunity to make a big improvement to this front walk, Roger. Two bad pieces of concrete that are now gone. And filling in where there was one missing piece of concrete. Right. <laughs> right. And uh, so instead of concrete, you're going down with new pavers. Right, except these are concrete. They're not clay pavers, they're concrete pavers. So made to look like a brick. So yeah. they definitely got the color right, and they got the size right, that's for sure. What do you love about these? Every one is exactly the same. So when you lay them down, you don't have to worry about if one's longer, shorter, thicker, yeah. or anything like that. It makes us go really fast. All right. And uh, your prep work here for the base, same formula as usual? Same formula as usual. Dig out the loam, dig out the clay, put in crusher run, pack that down, a little bit of sand, screed it off, mm -hmm. set the pavers. Well, Kevin, we're putting these down in a running bond pattern. That means they're brick all run in the same direction on the long walkway. So a pretty simple pattern and right. really very few cuts, right? Just here at the end and at the front. Very few, and that's a good thing. Right. We don't mind missing those. Right. Now, the one thing I want you to notice is that each one of these has nubs on them, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's so when they fit together, they have perfect spacing for we're going to be putting in polymeric sand and that allows it to get down into the joint. Oh, that's nice, huh? That's one of the reasons why it goes so fast, right? Yep. So when you put these in, you click it next to the other brick that's in and drop it. Perfect oh, yeah. spacing perfect every time. Spacing. And so if that had been a traditional brick with its irregular shape, yep. you'd have to set that off manually to make sure that you had enough room. Right. You'd probably have to hit it with a rubber hammer to move it down and then shake it one side to the other. Hence the speed that they're Hence using. Hence the speed. So Roger, with this edge course you've got going there, sometimes I see you guys sort of flip them up on end so you can bury them. 
Right, and that would be to hold the walk in place. But if you look closely, there's little nubs on here, another one right here, mm. and the bottom is unfinished, so you don't want to see the bottom or these nubs. So that's why Tom's laying them flat right here. Right, so what we're going to do for strength at the edge is we're going to use this plastic edging. It's going to butt up against a brick, and then we're just going to drive a spike down through into the ground, and that'll hold it in place. And we're not even going to see this, are we? No, we're going to scrape off a little sand, and it'll sit on the base, and it'll just hold that edge right in place. Kevin, now the secret to the good walk is to sweep the joints in with polymeric sand. We use the compactor to vibrate the pavers and move the polymeric sand down in the joints. Last step is misting the bricks so that the polymeric sand gets washed down and activated and then it'll lock up and it'll be rock solid. All right, and is it uh, ready to be walked on? For you it is, yeah. Perfect, because I gotta go inside and check on some stained glass. We're gonna see you out back because we got some heavy industry going on, right? A lot going on out back. All right, Roger, this looks beautiful. Liz has worked tirelessly on a stained glass window for this little pantry area here. Hey guys. Hey. Uh, so it is finally back on site and we get to look at this masterpiece. That is awesome. Thank you. So Liz, this was uh, your creation and what was the inspiration? The Japanese maple in the front yard. Well, that explains all these beautiful red colors right here all throughout. Last time we saw this, the glass was cut, it was ground, and then it was soldered in place. What happens after that? The next step would be to put a zinc frame around it. Yeah. And then after was the black patina that was applied, was applied to the solder. And uh, to finish, we apply a wax. A to wax to protect this? To clean and uh, uh, protect the Beautiful. glass and the solder. Well, you are a good teacher. This student has pulled this one off. Is that ready to go in? Yeah. Yes, it is. Let's see that. This is going to look terrific with the light behind it. this thing looks like installed. Wow. Whoa. Awesome. You like that, Liz? I love it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it's done. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> You're welcome. Very nice job, guys. Very nice. When it rains here in Newton, all that rainwater runoff from roofs and gutters and driveways, it all goes into a town storm drainage system, which is old and overwhelmed. So when we add new buildings, like our garage here, which means less ground to absorb the rainwater and more roof surface to shed it, well, the town requires that we deal with the runoff. And Roger, that explains the massive hole that is now in our backyard. Yeah, it's eight feet wide and seven feet deep, and it's an engineered trench for us to control water. We removed 100 yards of material to prep this hole. Once we had it down that deep, 
We put down the fabric on the sides and in the bottom we're putting in a foot of stone to lay these galleys or dry wells on. This is the galley right here, this yep. tank coming in? This is the main part of the system. There's going to be eight of those set in per the engineer's spec and they'll all lock up together and then we'll do a couple other things to control the rest of the water. And how long is this trench? 36 feet. That is a big hole. Yep. So these concrete bins are open in the middle. The water goes inside and then slowly drains down into the ground. And are they piped together or are they just sort of? No, they're just sort of meshed together. They don't have to be watertight, so if a little water comes out, it's not going to make any difference. Right. We want the water to come out. Each one of these galleys will hold 300 gallons of water, so we're looking at 2,400 gallons just in the galleys alone. Right. But with the stone that's here, it's going to even hold more water than that. And you know, so this is underneath the driveway, so obviously they're built to be able to you know, drive a car over this area when it's right. filled. Right, this is what's called H20, or heavy duty tank, so you can drive over it. Right. And you can see also there's a clean out in the top. There's oh, gonna yeah. be, to make sure we, if debris gets in there, we can take it away. This is a lot of engineering. What does this thing cost? This is a lot of engineering and a lot of work, and it's probably going to be about $25,000 by the time we're done. Well, that's unbelievable. And obviously not a surprise to the homeowners, right? No, no. This was all figured right from the get-go in the beginning, because you can't get a building permit without doing this work. You pull a permit, they tell you you got to do this. So he's uh, starting with a little bit of the backfill, huh? Right, he wants to start from the back and work his way out as he's setting the galleys. Kevin, this fabric you see all the way around the edge is a soil separator. What it does, it keeps all the fines that are in the soil from getting into the stone and all the voids we have inside it. We essentially don't want this system to clog up. No. It's amazing to think, Roger, that, I mean, prior to this, they used to just use the gutters from the house and the uh, sewers in the street, and now, I mean, look at all this engineering. Yeah, and the engineering took into consideration a lot of things. Number one was they did a perk test to test the soil to see how fast the water would go through it. Number two is impervious surface. You've got a roof you've got to take into calculations and the driveway and all that water that runs off of that, you got to control it. So they figure this system for a hundred year storm. Now in a hundred year storm, you're going to get nine inches of rain over 24 hours. Holy mackerel. That's an insane amount of water. Well, with all the tanks in, Jimmy can now start backfilling them. He's going to take him back from all the way to the top and up about a foot above the tank. But he's still got some other stuff to do. He's got to cut the driveway, put in a trench drain that'll tie in there and collect that downspout and run it in from the house. A lot of work, right? A lot of work. Hey, Tommy. Hey, boy, a lot of work just to collect a little rainwater, isn't it? A little <laughs> rainwater. Not a little rainwater, a lot if it ever comes. Yeah. All right, so some good progress this week, fellas. And Roger, next week, what have you got for us? Next week, hopefully, we'll prep for planting, and I got a few special guests that are going to help me mm, out. Interesting. And Tommy, what about you? We're going to install a fire back behind the stove in the kitchen. Sounds cool. All right, so until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Roger Cook. And I'm Tom Silver. For this old house. A little rainwater. A little rain. You know, and what, how many of your storms have you been through? Uh, two. Next time on This Old House. Have you ever heard of a fire back? Well, Joe and Liz found a unique way to use one in their kitchen. It's time to bring back the beauty of this old landscape. Wow. Holy smoke. And Jeff, what am I looking at here? So you're looking at a 110-year-old reclaimed oak. Came out of a barn in Ohio. That's next time on This Old House. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.